つまりお前は二人の私を相手にしなければならない。Yeah, both of yourselves are gonna die. これが念によって完成した真の国王権。名付けて国王神権。<laughs> I X surprising X win. The only surprise here would be a Hisoka defeat. Is he, is he really twirling his arm on his finger? Gee, <laughs> what a mystery. Part of me actually hopes that Castro does kill Hisoka because of how insane that would be. I feel like Castro's already lost this chess game. We interrupt this, this battle. Life or death battle for a card trick. This is a surprise. Well, oh, this old chestnut. I was about to go back and pick one, but no need. I see Ahsoka also went to fourth grade. He lost them at math. <laughs> he lost them at simple arithmetic. Yeah, I mean, he was just way too casual about losing that arm. There had to be something. <laughs> satanic magic trick. Math, the most satanic force. Oh, yeah, and the card. Out of his stump of an arm. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for that announcement. Oh, he's rattled. Take it. Oh, he's not reading it. He's not reading the signs. Hisoka has sacrificed nothing. Yeah. 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 Right. So Castro is riled up from emotions, but from the viewer's perspective, it, it's so obvious that Ahsoka is on top. I mean, there's like this endless rock, scissors, paper game that goes like having resources or, or power, having the upper hand, actually having really strong attributes affects your behavior in very important and noticeable ways that we're all wired. I think probably genetically, but definitely socially from experience to pick up on and read and identify the attributes. But then there's the other stage where people who can figure out those attributes can just mimic them without having the underlying strength. And that creates an obvious incentive and problem of people hijacking the symptoms of greatness to affect selfish or destructive ends. A social example would be like feigning virtue to get into someone's good graces. A material example would be like flaunting expensive items to portray wealth. But interesting to me is how quickly that falls apart under any kind of scrutiny or test and one of the biggest tests to reveal whether someone actually has qualities or is just signaling qualities is what happens when they have skin in the game. What happens when they actually have to support their outward signs with real difficult, potentially dangerous action. It's so clear looking at Hisoka, like losing both his arms, that he's in a place so far ahead of anyone, anyone watching, that this is all acceptable to him. Or he's absolutely insane and people who are insane in that way wouldn't have made it this far. <laughs> A freaky one. This feels like a mystery for Gon to solve. Oh, he might actually live then. Yeah, there it is. Over. You can all, speaking of like being able to tell things about people, you can almost always tell who's gonna lose by who's more riled up emotionally. Oh, I did not. Did he? Did that? <laughs> he just rocket punched him. That's amazing with his severed hand. So it's just so entertaining. Speaking of having spare resources, he has enough spare energy to have a sense of humor about the way he fights. I did not realize Sasoka was. This powerful. I knew he was powerful. I didn't know he was this powerful. It's heartbreaking that this whole character, his whole arc, his whole point in life is to make Hisoka look like the man. I'm loving this pro-humanity, appreciation for complexity of humanity that I'm 100% unnecessarily projecting into Hisoka right now. I've been thinking about this recently in relation to the whole like AI wave, because it's so cool, but it's like nothing close to what I imagined AI to be yet, which would be something that is at least almost 
caught up with human cognition when really it feels to me like it's it's much closer to the side of just renaming work tools AI. At this point, I'm just waiting for someone to release a calculator called AI Math. I think at heart is a deep, deep underestimation of the complexity of what humans are. So I agree with Hisoka. He's totally saying that. <laughs> It's a lot to learn from this fight. Too bad Gon can't watch it yet. <laughs> like, it's looking at such a high standard, too, for, for talent and success. Like, he didn't even kill Castro. Castro's not ready yet. What's the upper range? Who does he actually want to kill? Is she a member of the, the what do you call it? The spiders? It was pointed out to me, and it's interesting. Hisoka does seem to have like a like a crew, like a circle, a social circle, which you might not expect from someone like him. In a lot of surprising ways, despite him being this like murder-obsessed, erotic clown, he's an intelligent person. He's a human. I think he's a lot of things. I don't know if he's an idiot. They really did lose his arms. That's impressive. <laughs> what in the black mirror? Alright, we are now establishing. We have now established the fact that we can heal severed limbs. I feel like this is critical for Gon. <laughs> At some point. <laughs> Must be. This kid is gonna lose limbs. I take that Nen skill, that's pretty cool. Not flashy, but useful. In high demand. Uh-oh. Is she a ripe fruit? He's an admirer. Someone like Ahsoka, you know, he's just rich accidentally. He's rich despite, or actually maybe precisely because he doesn't give a crap about money. It just comes naturally as like an offshoot of his talent. Ah. It's very controlling of his image and secrets. That was a handkerchief. He's scary. Scary dude. He's as scary as he is creepy. Why am I starting to like Ahsoka? That's a weird feeling. He's kind of chill. I don't really know how to put that. If it wasn't for the whole like erotic killing thing, he seems like he'd be pretty fun to hang out with. And on some level, I'm always going to respect at least this particular aspect of anybody who has developed their own strength enough that they can kind of make their own rules and they're their own self-generating source of who they are and what they choose to do. <laughs> Wow, we're getting a childhood look at Hisoka. Yeah, we don't really need this recap. We were there. Oh, that, okay, I stand corrected. That's actually, I had no idea. And he distracted everyone with arithmetic. Okay, yeah, this was pretty important. It's very complex. And that was a guiding beacon for my rocket punch. There's a lot going on simultaneously. And he did that so calmly. I mean, this girl is insanely powerful herself if she saw this. Okay, this explains why he's so powerful too. Partly. He loves it. He loves it. He loves it more than the outcome. Man, what does that mean? That's one of the reasons why he's so powerful. He's the real deal. I think when you love the thing itself, more than the, the result or the rewards you're dreaming of, you enter into this slipstream where you're in like exponential growth territory. A lot of people say they want to learn certain things. What they actually mean is they want to be able to do certain things already and they don't love the craft itself. They don't love the, the act of 
studying it and the ins and outs and the intricacies. They just want to have the the talent because they perceive that being the fun thing. Similarly and relatedly, a lot of times when people say they want to be something, what they mean is they want something totally different that they think being that thing will bestow on them. Take like guitar, for example. How many kids have said they wanted to learn guitar? What most of them probably meant is that they wanted to like be on stage receiving attention and adulation for making people feel certain ways. Having nothing to do with the act of actually picking up a guitar and plugging away at it and enjoying the thrill of discovery and obsessing about it and thinking about it and synthesizing ideas and strategies and techniques in your head. But then, of course, it's the people who enjoy it at that level that end up getting that higher stage that that most people crave. Ahsoka's love really comes through in this conversation for Nen. And I feel like maybe Gon is at the beginning of a similar journey. It's also great that despite this whole magical system, this whole other element of the, the psychological battle was really important. <laughs> As always. God, that was humiliating. Imagine, like, cutting off your opponent's arm and then being knocked out by it. Yeah, the abilities are cool, but it's not the abilities, it's... it's him. There it is. Imagine Hisoka being subservient. Is this like a... is this a romance thing? Is this sort of lonely? I'm getting a little bit of a, a lonely vibe from that scene as well. He wanted her to be impressed and like share in his glee. He's like spilling his guts about his bubblegum childhood and everything. That was a lie. Okay, that was fast. Yeah, what were you what were you going for there? Go on. Go on, my my sweet child. Yeah, like a whole lot. Someone's got to learn how to reattach arms on our team. But he did, sort of. We don't need the memories. But he does, though. I could be totally misreading it, but I feel like he actually does want... That's oh, fake. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that adds up. That stacks. I don't think he would be subservient in a gang. Right. Are you lonely, Ahsoka? You can admit it. Is that not a common trait of people who are great? I don't know. This is a, a thought experiment. Can anybody be so great and feel so great about themselves that they're their own self-generating source of, like, love and <laughs> human contact? I'm leaning towards no. I mean, there's definitely an individual spiritual connection to greatness. It's hard to be great in a vacuum, or it's hard to subsist on that alone. I don't know how to explain it. To take a super extreme example to illustrate the point, imagine you took a full inventory of every possible skill you could have in life as a human. Now imagine you, on objective levels, reach the height of every single one of those skills. How great that would feel. And now imagine you have all that, but you're the only human being on the planet. What the hell is the point? Brush your teeth, un unripe fruit. I don't understand why they do it twice. Oh, now you introduce him after he's irrelevant. Who? <laughs> uh. He's like the second most irrelevant character in the show now after Zushi. I mean, I guess the good news out of this episode is that Hisoka needs to heal. So that gives Gon and Kalua some time. Gon is gonna get there though. I mean, I feel like they're deliberately setting up similarities between Gon and Hisoka. They're both like crazy. They're both gonna be zealots for the craft. I mean, Gon is gonna take to Nen like Deku took to heroism or like Eren took to rage, but he does need time. This was a really interesting episode because a lot of it just took place in a hotel room, replaying the events of the episode, but from a different perspective. But I think it's really important. It absolutely gave me an increase appreciation and fear of Hisoka, but also like a little bit of admiration, which is kind of bizarre, but that's how I feel about it. Suffice it to say, there's way, way more to him than I initially expected seeing his introduction in the Hunter exam arc.